my name is Jeanette Gelauf. I'm a researcher who's working in Edinburgh and in Groningen. Uh, and in this video we'd like to explain some of the data that we found in a follow-up study performed in Edinburgh. We performed a follow-up study of a large case control cohort that has been published in BRAIN previously. In this baseline study, 107 patients with functional limb weakness, 46 neurological controls who also suffered from limb weakness, and 38 healthy controls were included. The study was performed by Professor John Stone, who investigated all these patients by performing a neurological examination and a semi-structured interview. Furthermore, these patients filled out questionnaires. Let's go back to this side. I want you to push out again as hard as you can. Really stop me. Push, 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 push. Now when we do that, we can see that actually what's happening over on the right side is that I can't, it's become much stronger and I can't push the knee in now. Mm -hmm. So it's brought out the automatic movement. On average 14 years later, this large case control cohort provided us with the opportunity to perform a long-term follow-up study. In the rest of this video, the results of this study will be discussed. One patient in the functional group was misdiagnosed and was found to have MS. One patient in the control group was also misdiagnosed. Six patients with functional limb weakness developed a new neurological disease in addition to the functional symptoms. In three of these patients, we consider the possibility that the functional symptoms might have been prodromal to the neurological disease they developed later. How many patients died and of what cause? We consulted the National Registry of the UK to find out if patients had died during follow-up. In total, 11 patients with functional limb weakness and 8 neurological controls died. Causes of death were mainly cardiovascular disease and malignancies in the functional limb weakness group. This was different in the neurological controls. In that group, most patients died of causes either primarily or secondarily related to the initial diagnosis. The deceased patients were older and had worse general health at baseline. Did the limb weakness improve? After 14 years of follow-up, we asked patients via a questionnaire to rate the severity of their limb weakness and we compared this between groups. As you can see, a significantly larger percentage of patients improved in the functional limb weakness group. Can we predict which patients have good or bad outcomes? The following four factors correlated to the outcome negatively. Somatization disorder, pain, high total symptom count, bad general health. However, in the multivariable analysis, this did not hold true. We can draw a number of important conclusions. First of all, the misdiagnosis rate that we found was really low, which is comparable to earlier studies. Secondly, in the functional limb weakness group, death rate was slightly higher than in the general population. Thirdly, we found that a large number of patients after long-term follow-up still suffer from limb weakness, and also that general health was comparable between the functional group and the neurological group. And lastly, we were not able to predict individual outcomes based on baseline factors. 